welcome into Inside CU Sports. I'm your host, Jordan Alvis. The Lady Tiger and Tiger basketball teams, it was a big week for them last week, but it doesn't get any harder going into this week. Campbellsville, they split at Lindsay, or excuse me, they were swept by Lindsay Wilson on Thursday night. They split on Saturday against Cumberland University, but this week they bring in University of the Cumberlands and Pikeville. It doesn't get any easier. And here to talk about it with the Lady Tigers is head coach Ginger Colvin and, mm -hmm. and coach 77-72 uh, loss at Lindsay Wilson mm -hmm. on Thursday night. You talk about a great environment to play in. It doesn't get any better than the Campbellsville Lindsay rivalry. Yeah, it's fun. It's uh, it's so much fun. Even you know a lot of people don't like to go to their terrible rivalries place, but it's it's so close. The students travel well, and uh, you look our fans traveled extremely well at that place, and it it was so much fun to be a part of. It was a uh, I'm sure a packed house and um, pretty deafening at times. 77-72 uh, loss, just couldn't mm. get over the hump late. Lauren Turner yep. missed a few free throws. She was tired late. She, yep. she played a lot of minutes uh, with Lindsey Wilson running up and down the, floor, the, whole, or the, the court the whole time. It was something that uh, just with the lack of depth with Leanne now at, mm -hmm. at the point guard position. Uh, but Lauren's played really well. She, she stepped that up and, yep. and played really well against Cumberland. She has played well, and uh, we've just kind of thrown her to the wolves. Lauren never played point in high school, so we're, she's playing a totally new position for her, and um, I feel like she's getting there and doing a, a good job for us. But, you know, our kids just performed, I thought, extremely well. Um, Lindsay's extremely talented, and uh, for us to come out of there, um, uh, obviously we were defeated, but I don't think we felt defeated. You know, we knew a, a play here, a play there could have gone, gone differently for us. Talking about Madison Clements, she was able to create some shots for herself, mm -hmm. hit some open jumpers yeah. as well, career high 25 points. Uh, crazy that that's her career high. Um, uh, Matt told me that when, when I walked over there, and that, that blew me away a little bit. But she's just a gamer. She loves those type of situations, and you can just look in her eyes and know that she's going to make a play. And uh, She's making plays over kids that she probably shouldn't be making plays over, but that's just her, and uh, I was really proud of the way she performed. The biggest stat, obviously, looking at just the box score, 20 mm -hmm. offensive rebounds for Lindsey Wilson, right. 20 second chance points. So athletic, we've talked about it all year, probably right. one of the most athletic teams in the country. Mm -hmm. Have a chance to move up to number two in the rankings this week. But but that was really, you, you get a, a defensive rebound here, defensive right. rebound there. You you hold them to, to 15 second chance mm -hmm. points. It's a brand new ballgame. Yeah, and you know, even with that, we had more field goals than they did. Mm -hmm. we have, um, the free throw line was the difference. And um, so if we if we just knock down a few free throws that we typically, Stewart missed two, Emily missed two, Lauren missed two. So if we knock those down, it's a different game. They hit a half-court shot at the end of the third, and actually not even a half-court shot. It was three-quarter if you go back and look at it. So, um, you know, it's and that's the way the games are. That's, that's why they're so fun to watch. But uh, I was real pleased with our effort. Like you say, they're, they are the most athletic team in the country. I can promise you that. I've watched a lot of games, and there's not a team out there that has the athleticism or depth that they have. Kayla Stiles, 23 points, 14 mm -hmm. rebounds, was the Mid-South Conference Player of the Week this week. She's kind of the, the, the X factor for them. Her and Chanel mm -hmm. Roberts both right. played really well against, or for Lindsey Wilson. Uh, Roberts is, is incredible. You know, Styles is more flashy, and I think she gets a lot of that attention just because of her length and because of what she can do. Uh, Chanel Roberts is, if if uh, I don't know, I, I I you know, I think both of those kids could contend for Player of the Year or yeah, Player of the Year in our conference, and they're just two exceptional, exceptionally talented players. And uh, you know, she de she deserved that uh, Player of the Week, and um, you know, they're they're going to give a lot of teams a lot of problems here on out, but. Uh, we feel like if we get them again, which hopefully we will, um, you know, we can give them another game and maybe maybe come out a little differently this time. Tough luck loss on Thursday, but then you go to Saturday at Cumberland University mm -hmm. in Lebanon. Huge matchup again. 76-67 yep. win. You pull out that win. There was no letdown. Lauren Turner played very well. Mm -hmm. Emily Fox, 16 points, hit four threes. Yep. There wasn't a letdown after a tough game on Thursday yeah. going into Saturday. That was my fear. Uh, you know, and we just kept selling it to them. And, Obviously, Madison Clements has back issues, so we travel a little different sometimes. Cumberland U's not that far, but she has a hard time rolling off of a van and, and playing. So it worked out well. We went down Friday night. We regrouped. We watched just Cumberland U. We tried to put Lindsay behind us because that's such an emotional thing, and I'm glad we did. I feel like that kind of helped us refocus, regroup, and get ourselves ready for that. And Cumberland U's ranked 14th in the country. That's not a game you go down and expect to, to win, but I feel like – Honestly, these last two games are probably our two best played games this season. So we're playing good basketball right now, but we have to we have to keep it going. Uh, four players that stood out to me on Saturday: Emily mm -hmm. Fox with the deep three, scored 16 points, team high. Then you had uh, Madison Stewart. She's a different kind of a player. She's yeah. not necessarily a shooter. Uh, she's more I wouldn't say flashy, but she can. She's more mm -hmm. athletic in the right. paint. Uh, she had 15 points. Mm -hmm. Lauren Turner, who's been playing the point guard, 
Uh, she right. she created steals and created offensive mm -hmm. uh, baskets like that. And then you have Jordan Dorham, who's just a beast in the paint, right. kind of just drop step and lays it in. Four different players there, and they've really been good for you all year. They have, and, and of course, Madison Stewart um, broke her foot early, and yep. she's just now really starting to get in the groove. She's not in shape. Um, you know, you see that when we watch game film or when I look out, she's still trying to get in game shape. And uh, she's just phenomenal. She's a lefty for one, which is tough sometimes to guard. And uh, like you said, she's athletic and she does a lot of uh, things well for us. Emily hit one from their uh, logo at the at the jump circle. It I might, may have been one of the deepest ones I've, I've seen her shoot so far. And then, like you say, Lauren. Lauren was exceptional defensively uh, that game as well as offensively. And, uh, you know, we're just in Jordan. Jordan fouled out. I don't know how well she would have ended up playing if she hadn't got those fouls. And then, uh, you know, and the thing that we preach about more than anything, Madison Kaiser played seven minutes. Yep and it was probably the most productive seven minutes she could have played. She was on the floor. She had two offensive rebounds. She had two defensive rebounds that she had to dive on the floor to take, and uh, I thought she had exceptional seven minutes, and that's what we need. And, uh, you know, Madison Kaiser's had uh, injury issues, and we're trying to get her back in the swing of things. So if we can add her and keep adding her like we had Madison Stewart, I feel like we'll just continue to get better. Once again, the Lady Tigers lost to Lindsey Wilson on Thursday, 77-72 and then defeated Cumberland University 76-67. But it doesn't get any easier this week. Campbellsville hosts Cumberlands and Pikeville, two Mid-South Conference games coming up on Thursday and Saturday. When we come back, we're going to talk to Coach about those games as well. So stay with us here on Inside CU Sports. Welcome back into Inside CU Sports. Ginger Colvin's still with us here in the studios tonight. And Coach, uh, it doesn't get any easier this week. We'll mm -hmm. go right into it. You got University of the Cumberlands, who's a little down this year, just a 12 and 11 mm -hmm. record. But then you got Pikeville on uh, Saturday. Right. Uh, Pikeville, top 25 team, tough win at third place uh, back early. I think it was January 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get any easier in the Mid-South Conference. No. And, um, you know, we talk about travel partners all the time and lack of. I've gone to appreciate that quite a bit because. Now we prepare for two teams. Uh, University of the Cumberlands is a totally different team than University of Pikeville, and uh, they'll slow things down. They'll they'll try to get the ball inside, do a lot of different things, and then U Pike is obviously uh, run and gun. They like to get out and go. And yeah, you know, you look at our two week span. Our rankings are in two weeks, uh, every two weeks now. Uh, our three or four games have been against top twenty five opponents. We're the only team in the country that has had to play that type of schedule. And then on top of that, without a travel partner. So uh, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. And, uh, you know, I know Brent with the men's basketball is in the same situation. It's just really hard going into that. And, um, but, you know, you just have to prepare. You have to be ready. And uh, that's just the hand we're dealt right now, and we have to try to get through it. Looking at how these two teams compare on the stat sheet, so to speak, Campbellsville 21-4 and four overall, University of the Cumberland's 12-1. and one. Uh, Campbell's was kind of got the edge there, 75 points a game to 62 points for mm -hmm. Cumberland's. Uh, field goal percentage, three point, you go all the way down. Obviously, Cumberland's just having a down year. They're kind of playing a little bit differently than they did back mm -hmm. on that uh, January 7th matchup. They are, but, you know, when you play the Cumberland's, you can't really look at that. You can't really compare those stats because that's the way they are all the time. You know, they, they try to slow it down. They try to get you, and if you look, we scored 57 points yeah. at their place. So we didn't score our average. We just did an exceptional job defensively. Uh, but you and I talked off, we, they're playing a little bit different now. They've got some injuries, and uh, we've had to go back and re-scout game film. Usually that second round, you're not re-scouting. You, you, know, you kind of know how everybody's going to play, but they're playing a lot different than they did the first time we played them. Uh, like you said, the January 9th game, 57-37. Mm -hmm. You didn't play your best at Cumberland. Right. Uh, but what is it, what is it going to take on Thursday night to, to kind of flip the switch, so to speak, and keep this momentum going after Thursday and Saturday? I think that's it. I think it's momentum. Our defense has been really good. I think we've got to keep that going and uh, just really get after it. Um, and then offensively attack. Again, Lauren's got a few more games under her belt now. At the point spot, she's not as hesitant, and I think she can get down the floor and create some stuff for us. Then you move into Saturday. Uh, you mm -hmm. have University of Pikeville, number 23 team in the country, 8-7 and seven record, mm -hmm. a new coach, uh, Coach Clifton Williams. We talked about him earlier in the yeah. year, but he's really done well with this Pikeville team. He he's has. got Kella Eldridge. He's got Andre, Andrea Matchin. I mean, yeah. both of those are, are two very mm -hmm. good very good guards. They are. They're, they're so solid. And, uh, you know, they have their, all, their starting five back from their Final Four team last year. The coaching changes, I think, threw them all for a loop. 
And like you say, Coach Williams, I think's got them where he wants them now. They're they're running a little bit different style offensively, but it's working for them. And they, um, you know, they're just very very explosive offensively, and they've committed to what they want to do defensively and uh, it'll be a, it'll be a huge game for us. Also looking at how these two teams compare, Campbellsville 21 and 4 overall record, Pikeville 18 uh, 18 and 7 overall record. Looking at the stats coach, they actually score more points than, mm -hmm. than Campbellsville. They shoot the ball a little bit better. Uh, they they average a couple more rebounds a game mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, what will it take Saturday to be able to to keep the momentum going from Thursday night? All right, I think defensive. I think it's we've got to come out and we've got to have a great defensive effort. You know, you said um, Eldridge, she's she's phenomenal. Uh, she's one of my favorite players in the conference, and then they just keep going on down. They're very deep. They uh, they do a lot of things extremely well. So we've got our hands full. Uh, then you move in after that. Mm -hmm. You still have a couple more conference games. Right. Shawnee, Georgetown, Life. Mm -hmm. uh, you you talk about Thursday night. You're going to recognize Emily Fox, 1,000 point mm -hmm. score. Uh, Hootie and I talked about that last week. She's yeah. been one of those players that's just uh, unbelievable to watch. You got her and Hagen Tyler on the men's side. Just both of those yeah. great shooters, uh, younger players coming into the program, mm -hmm. and really lit it up when they when they first stepped on campus. She did. Uh, Emily's just been an impact from the time she she stepped foot here, and we're so blessed to have her. She's fun to watch, but um, you know. Emily does a lot of things well for us other than just, just shoot the ball. And um, that's something that, you know, I guess a lot of people watching the game doesn't realize she's a really good defender. She's very smart. She passes the ball extremely well, and uh, she's clutch in, in clutch time. So we're – and Emily's a great student and a great kid off the floor. You and, talk about, too, uh, she's developing the defensive side. Mm -hmm. She's really stepped up on the defensive end, mm -hmm. got in better shape, so right. to speak. And, and she's been able to lock down some defenders uh, in that uh, the twilight yeah. zone that you play, being able to stop drives and, and the kind of the straight line drives to the, yeah. to the rim. And she gets she's, – she's, uh, she has very quick hands. And uh, – Emily's very smart. She, uh, we study a lot of game film, and um, if there's a player that has tendencies, she picks up on those, and, and she does a great job for us. Emily's uh, one of the best I've had an opportunity to coach. And she scored those points in just two and a half years. Thank you. Right. She'd have been here for, for the full four years. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's crazy to think of, of what Emily would have done for us, uh, record book wise. Yeah. You know, we're we're thrilled. Emily was a huge part of the team that made it to the national finals, and. Uh, that was just the half a year that she played, so um, we wouldn't trade that, I don't think. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time, Thank and you. good luck on Thursday. Good luck Saturday. Another big week for you yes, in conference is. play. Thank you. Once again, the Lady Tigers, they host University of the Cumberland, 6 p.m. on Thursday night. Our coverage starts at 545, and then on Saturday, 2 p.m. doubleheader. Our coverage starts at 145 on these same stations, 88.7 The Tiger, the TuneIn Radio app, and also Comcast Channel 10, WLCU-TV. When we come back, the head coach of the Tigers is going to stop by, Brent Vernon. He's going to stop by and talk about last week and also preview this week as well. So stay with us here on Inside CU Sports. Whether you're two or 102, the Tigerville Grill has something for you. Take advantage of the Build Your Own Burger menu. In the mood for something small? Choose one of the many delicious slider options. Call ahead and use our fast and easy drive through Oh, that cool freestyle fountain drink machine? We've still got it. The Tigerville Grill, located at 314 North Columbia Avenue and open to the public 11 to 8 daily. Welcome back into Inside C Sports. Jordan Alvis with you for our third segment tonight here on 88.7 The Tiger and Comcast Channel 10. Thanks for tuning in. Now with us here in the studios, though, as we're transitioning to Tiger basketball, Brent Vernon and Coach, it was a tough week for you. Uh, a couple of losses to, to Life and Cumberland U. You go on the road, you fall to uh, Lindsey Wilson, excuse me, I said Life, Lindsey Wilson 76-72, and then at Cumberland University 84-76. Uh, just couldn't get over the hump late, wasn't able to, to make enough shots, get enough stops down the stretch. Yeah, the Lindsey Wilson game, you know, for 35 minutes, we, we led the game, and then you go back and look at it, and, and played really good basketball. And we had a couple lulls in, in the first half, you know, just about a minute and a half each. and and one little one in the second half to where we let them go on 6-7-0 runs where they got back into the game and then eventually took the lead. And we did a great job competing and, and having chances down the stretch. And like you said, you know, they just made a few more plays down the stretch than we did. You caught them on good shooting nights. Lindsey Wilson hit 51 percent, 28 of 55. 48 points of their 76 were in the paint. Same thing for Cumberland. 48 percent from the floor, 
46 of their 84 points were in the paint. And that's something that's really kind of haunted you all year, kind of some, some of the inside presence. It has. Early on against Lindsay, we did a really good job at first shot defense and, and rebounding the basketball. And, and they started going inside, and it wasn't always their post. If you look, you know, it was their point guard getting to the lane, Charles Sutton, who's a, who's a wing. Whenever Rod Lawrence got in foul trouble in the second half, they did a good job of of going with Chuck uh, Sutton into the post some, a, a bigger, stronger guard, and it was tough for Ron Hagen. And then they had a couple posts that did some some things, and their percentages was good, and it got better in the second half because we made some some crucial live ball turnovers to where they got transition baskets, and that, that was really what put it over the top. And you look at the same thing with Cumberland U, it wasn't their post. Our guards didn't do a good enough job of keeping their guards out of the lane, and, and they really got dribble penetration anytime they wanted to. And, for us, you know, it's a sense of pride that has to come up about being able to play better defense. And that's something that you really preached from the very get-go. Your news, your press conference right when you were hired, you talked about how your dad's teams really took a lot of pride in their defense. That's something this team is, is still trying to catch on and, and learn a little bit. And, and what you see is we're about 50-50. We'll play really good defense about 50% of the time, but, but it's just not – ingrained in their head, yeah, and the mentality we have isn't the right mentality. Um, we think well, if, our, if my guy scores, I'll go, get, I'll go get two points on the other end, it cancels each other out, and that's not the way it is. We gotta stop and we gotta get positive stuff. We gotta be positive at the point guard position, shooting guard, all the way one through five. But we are, we're making improvements. There's not one thing I can say about our team. Whenever we go to practice every day, our work ethic and our willing to try to get better is there. Again, we're just getting to the game situations. We ha we go brain dead a little bit and just continue to make some of the little mistakes we've made all year. You talk about the effort's been good since uh, probably the last uh, probably two or three weeks. Uh, it's really been good for you. Uh, your brother talked about it last week as well. It's just the execution on the offensive end, taking some bad shots here and there, and that leads to run out baskets for the other team. Right, and, and it goes back. You know, I talked about some live ball turnovers and our percentages in our offense. You know, we're scoring definitely enough points to win. What our guys don't realize is when we take a bad shot, a quick shot in the shot clock, it's the same thing as a turnover. So whenever you look at points off turnovers, we may only be given 10, but if you have five bad shots where they get a layup on the other end, it's really like 20. But our effort has been unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm proud of our guys because, again, there, there's times we could have thrown the tally in, and we've not done that one bit. And, and we talked yesterday at practice, and, and we've got 13 guys in there that believe that we're going to roll off these last six games, and, and we've got to really continue to battle and work hard, and, and it starts Thursday night. To roll off these six games, you said it starts Thursday night. You host University of the Cumberlands. One of those matchups for you and, and your family, it means a little bit more to you. You went down to Williamsburg. You lost earlier in the season. Uh, and it was a close game late. So now moving into to Thursday night's game with the doubleheader with the women, uh, what will it take for, for the Tigers to pull out the upset? Uh, the same type of effort we've been doing. Again, at Cumberland's, we were pretty good. We lost by two. You know, Hagen made, missed a shot at the buzzer down there. And, and we just got to continue to build off of it. And, and, you know, it's hard whenever sometimes you're trying to build off losses. But I've told our guys we've done things these last couple of games, even with losses, that we can build off of. The first 32 minutes against Kermlin U, our offense was pretty good. Our defense was not where it needed to be. And we were a little fatigued, four games in eight days, but, but that's not an excuse that I want our guys to use. Our last eight minutes, so you know, we hold them to two of 12 from the field, and that's the kind of urgency I want to see from the jump on Thursday night. And I think we'll have it. And, and again, it's one of those things that we're still just looking for a little bit of right, the ball to bounce our way, and they do. I really still, uh, our guys have faith that we can take this thing off and get hot at the right time. You get hot at the right time, then you bring in Pikeville, number 14 team. You go number 10 on Thursday, number 14 on Saturday. It doesn't get any easier with Pikeville coming into town. It doesn't, but I think as a coach and as players, you like that. You like the challenge that's, that's presented in front of you. You'd rather be playing these good teams instead of teams that are a little further down. You want to play these ranked teams because when you get that win, it lets you know, man, we're right where we're, we're so close and where we need to be. If we can beat them, we can beat anybody. And, and again, if we can go get two this week, you know, we'll have Shawnee and Georgetown next week, and those are going to be huge games. But our guys, I, I'm just so proud of the confidence and, and the way that they're carrying themselves because, again, they, they could easily throw the talent, and they haven't yet. And we're going to keep fighting tooth and nail every day. Really quick before we have to go to another break, let's take a look at how these two teams, com or all the three teams, compare. Statistically wise, you're very even all the way across the board. Shooting percentages, rebounding, assists, blocks, free throws, threes, field goals, it doesn't matter. Points per game, everybody's pretty dang even. 
but it's getting the ball to bounce your way. You talked about that, just getting over the hump late in the game and be able to make stops when it really matters down the stretch. Right, and again, um, those stats say a lot. I think probably if you look at the defensive stats, our points per game given up, okay. is a it, that's where the that's change the is. And again, that's something that we can control. It's not something that the other team controls. We control that by getting stops. And, and you know, obviously our record's not what we wanted to be in conference, but we were looking at stats the other day. We're, we're minus three in points. I want to say to have that kind of, I mean, every game is coming down to the last minute or two, take away one or two games we've had in conference. So now it comes down to continuing that to where it comes down to the last minute or two. And instead of taking a bad shot or giving up a bucket, it's time to get a stop and get a score on the other end to where we can reverse the outcomes. Coach, we appreciate the time this week. Good luck. Uh, it's another big week for you. And moving forward, you talk about the six games left. You really need to run the table to have a chance to move up in the conference. Standings. Absolutely. And our guys are going to work hard to get that done. We appreciate the time. Thanks, Jordan. Once again, the Lady Tigers and the Tigers, they have a doubleheader Thursday against University of the Cumberland starting at 6 p.m. with the women's tip-off. Our coverage starts at 545 on these same stations, 88.7 The Tiger, the TuneIn Radio app, and also WLCU-TV, Comcast Channel 10. On Saturday, Campbells will host Pikeville and other Mid-South Conference games starting at 2. Our coverage starts at 145 with Jay Turner and Matt Payton. When we come back, we're transitioning to spring baseball. It's on the horizon. The Tiger baseball team gets in action this week. Head coach of the Tigers, Buford Sanders, is going to come by for a little segment previewing the season. So stay with us here on Inside CU Sports. WLCU-TV, a service of Campbellsville University. Comcast Cable Channel 10. Welcome back into Inside CU Sports. Can you believe it? It's spring. Spring's here, although the weather may not be changing yet. It may be getting colder before it gets warmer. Baseball and softball are on the horizon. Tiger baseball opens up this weekend. Lady Tiger softball in next weekend. And now joining us, though, head coach of the Tigers, Buford Sanders, in his 27th season here at the helm with the Tigers. And coach, can you believe baseball season's already here? Can't believe it, but I'm glad it is. Looking forward to it. It's something that you hear the crack of the bat out there. You get on the field. You're able to. You've been able to get on the field a little bit. A little bit. Just this January. Yeah, a little you hear bit. the crack of the bat. It just sounds so much better on the field than it does actually in the indoor facility and like that. Just yes, the natural is. sound of it. It, yep. it gives you chills down down your spine. I'm sure it does. Good stuff. Well, you move in this week. Freed Hardman University. Big game for you. Season opener. Freed Hardman. We talked about it a little bit off the air coming in after already starting their season last week with two wins over Georgia Gwinnett. They come in last year, you actually ended their season 7-2 to in the opening round, NAI opening round down in Savannah, Georgia. And they're going to be looking for a little revenge to start the season. Uh, but it's another tough game for you to start the season on February 10th. Well, Jordan, as you know, we usually start tough and our, our season is all our season. Our schedule has always been designed to play quality opponents because it develops us and gets us prepared and ready for where I want our team to be every year, which is in the playoffs, and to be fighting for a conference championship. But Freed Hardman uh, is well coached. They'll be ready to go. Um, they did open up and played well, took two from uh, a ranked team that's ranked higher than them, uh, took it to them, and, and got both of those games. And we'll be on the road. It'll be a, uh, a challenge for us, and we'll just see how we measure up. How tough is it to open the season on the road instead of uh, with your home opener scheduled for next week? I don't think there's really that much difference uh, to me. You know, it's obviously you have the uh, logistics piece and, and, and traveling and, and whatnot, but, uh, you know, opening it up and putting the field, the ball's five ounces there, bases will be 90 feet. Uh, we've been there before. Um, I don't see any big problem. You talk about putting yourself in a position to win a conference championship. You're coming off back-to-back -back regular season championships. You won your eighth conference title. The tradition of excellence that you've started back in the KIAC days before the Mid-South Conference was even built, uh, the Mid-South Conference championships that you have, the tournament championships you have. Uh, that's what's really put you, uh, I guess, the last few years, you've really, uh, I guess the last probably, what, 10 years, you've really set yourself apart from other conference teams. And Campbellsville has been one of the top programs in the country, and it's been uh, kind of started by you 27 years ago, you and Coach Danny Davis, before, before your time. Well, we have uh, developed a pattern of consistency. Um, I'm very proud of that, uh, very, very happy to be a part of it, and most of all, very happy to be a part of that with so many good players 
and, and good assistant coaches that you know have made that possible. But we, we have developed uh, a program consistently year in and year out where you know we're competitive. We're usually in the top three. We're usually in the hunt for the title, and we're usually in the hunt for you know for postseason. And again, the uh, the difficulties uh, of our opponents is what gets us there. You know, we may take some losses, or we, we can play great baseball and not win a game at Freed Hardman and still feel good about it in the sense of we played quality competition, we know we're going to get better, it shows us where we are right now, and it gets us ready for later on in the year, and we're used to playing and seeing tough pitching and tough opponents. doesn't matter how many conference championships you win. Last year, I remember at the conference tournament, we, we got a picture of you in the hallway, the big fist pump in the hallway. <laughs> Uh, you had a couple walk-off wins last year, the yeah. excitement around the program. It doesn't matter how long you've been a part of the program, how many championships you win. Uh, whenever you're in the moment, every new championship is just like winning the first, and, that, and that's what kind of keeps you going. It absolutely is. Uh, when I do not have that moment of enjoyment and, and, and that, that feeling that just overwhelms you when you know all the work, all the practices, all the ups and downs and the, the, the angst and the, the good moments and the bad moments and the struggles, and then you put it together and you find a way to get it done. It, it is just, it never gets old. It, never it gets is old. absolutely the greatest elixir ever, no doubt. Now that football season's over with, you've got March Madness and you've got baseball. Opening, opening day for the Tigers are just about a, a few days away now, two days away. Um, you have opening day for Major League Baseball coming up here in about 50 days or so. Uh, spring is here. Uh, but looking at your team this year, you have some new faces. You, you got some guys you bring back on the bump. You got Nick Preblick. You got Indalacia Romo who's come back from Tommy John surgery. He's looking to be uh, to kind of come back a little bit and make an impact as well. You got Riley Joyce who just joined the team back in December, um, who is one of your top hitters from last year. Romelo Carbucci. You got some key pieces there from last year. You have to mix them in with some new guys. How hard is that as a coaching staff to, to kind of mix the, that mixture, so to speak, with returning players and brand new players and transfers that you bring in? Well, it, it can always be difficult, and it's always a challenge, and it's something that you have to be aware of and you have to, to work at diligently as you get new personalities and trying to sell them on your philosophy and, and what, how you want things to be done. And then, you know, hopefully the returning players, they know and they are in a position to help guide and nurture and, and bring the newcomers along. And we've got uh, basically a, a new team. Uh, we have a lot of new faces. We do have a, a degree of athleticism that I think at this point is probably a little better than last year's. But, uh, you know, the, the performance piece and putting it all together is always the rub. You know, do, do we play well? Do we find ways to do it with the talent? Um, Pitching-wise is our biggest question. Because we have so many uh, pitchers. You know, Nick Preblick will start the first game, and we'll have a uh, Malik is scheduled to start the second game, and a freshman, John McGonzalez, is scheduled to start game three. And the majority of our pitchers really have not been battle tested in the league and, and with what we're up against. It's not that they don't have experience, because most of them are juniors or sophomores, but still being here, being together. Um, you know, it, it, it's different and it is a challenge. Uh, the big thing that we try to do coaches, coaching wise is just get them to understand what we're about, what we believe in, what our philosophy is, and buy into it. Because this is, this is, this is, it works. We're not arrogant about it, but it is working based on our, you know, on our track record and, you know, how our students behave and, and what they do academically and then, of course, on the field. Well, Coach, uh, we appreciate the time this week. Uh, uh, good luck. Safe travels down to Free Hardman. Thank you. Baseball season's here. Can you believe it? Thank you for uh, you and, and all your support staff and for doing the good job that you do for the university. I, I appreciate that person. I know all the other coaches do too. Coach, we appreciate it. Good luck this week. Thank you. The Tigers, the Tigers, they open up against Freed Hardman on Friday, uh, 3 p.m. first pitch on Friday. That is, uh, and then they, they have Saturday as well. Whenever they come back, they have their home opener against Midway University next Tuesday at uh, that ball game will be called on 88-7 the Tiger at 4 p.m. against Midway. So thanks for tuning in to Inside CU Sports this week. Same day, same time next week, Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Right here for more of Inside CU Sports.